Uh, Kenny McEwen. I'm, there we go. Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kenny McEwen. Uh, I am uh, super excited to go ahead and uh, have a uh, kind of a nice run through of the uh, RPR, Realtors Property Resource uh, software and website and asset that we have access to as realtors here uh, within the CCRA. Uh, just, you know, as far as introductions of myself, in case you don't know me, uh, I am the uh, co-owner with uh, my wonderful boss slash uh, wife, uh, Candice McEwen of Excel Real Estate. Uh, and have been uh, a member of this uh, committee for at least a couple of years now. So super excited to go ahead and hopefully provide some uh, insight and some valuable information for you guys on this particular product. Um, to kind of tell you guys a little bit about uh, you know my background and why I'm so excited about this. Uh, prior to real estate, I was in the sales and technical side of things. Uh, so software, things of that nature, something that I was actually not only a user, but also a, a support and salesperson of. So I know the value of a very, very valuable asset when it comes to software and a tool. So as we kind of go through this particular uh, webinar today, uh, one thing I want you guys to understand that this is gonna be a tool that you can go ahead and kind of throw into your, you know, your massive toolbox of resources that we have, right? Uh, obviously, we have different tools that are available to us, whether it be internally, uh, there are some very similar apps that, you know, I won't name that have access to a few of the different things within here in RPR uh, that may be paid uh, or may be free. And also, you know, internally within your firms, you know, there are different uh, assets that you may have with CRMs, software, things of that nature, or even, you know, things that you may be uh, purchasing and using on your own separately. Uh, RPR is a very powerful, powerful tool when used properly and uh, when used the right way. So uh, the one thing I would encourage you guys to do is to make sure that you are actually uh, using this, uh, you know, kind of uh, to your best ability and, you know, with your best comfort level. Uh, so again, you know, that'll be kind of how we kind of how we go ahead and think about this as we move forward. And Desiree, I think you had a question. Uh, yes, uh, just for a little housekeeping. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Desiree, your CCRA EdTech Chair. We are in webinar format today, so you guys won't be able to see all of the participants, but you can des definitely see all of us who are your panelists and who are presenting today. Um, we are asking, the chat is not available, so if you have any questions as Kenny goes through his presentation, please use the Q&A section of Zoom to ask us your questions and we'll get them answered um, either through the Q&A or we'll answer them live. We will be reserving about 15 minutes towards the end of our hour to answer any questions that we could not get answered in the Q&A or that might require Kenny to revisit a portion of his presentation. So thank you guys again for attending and we're gonna turn it over to Kenny. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, to kind of uh, give you guys an idea of how the flow will work, we're going to go ahead and kind of break this up into about three different uh, focuses today when it comes to comes to the webinar. First, we're going to kind of focus a little bit on navigation to start uh, with uh, uh, starting with how you can find support tools uh, within the RPR services. Secondly, we will go ahead and talk about CMAs and reports kind of bundling that conversation. Uh, prior uh, to our conversation today, uh, we had an opportunity to ask you guys, what is it that that is important to you uh, that you want to learn a little bit more about today. And CMAs by far and reports by far in different forms with the questions uh, definitely uh, were the majority of the questions that were there. So we'll make sure that you guys have a very much more comfortable idea of how uh, these reports work, what the CMAs, uh, you know, kind of work like here versus your other tools and, you know, situationally how you can use those. And I'll even try to go ahead and throw those out there myself as far as how I use them in the field. Lastly, we will go ahead and focus a little bit on the mobile uh, you know, uh, application. Uh, and, you know, if you have an iPhone, Android, it doesn't matter, it operates the same. But, uh, you know, again, I will go ahead and navigate the mobile site, the mobile app, and give you guys an idea of exactly how that will work, uh, you know, out in the field and what the mobile app will provide versus the actual website uh, in this full entirety. Also, I'll say this too. So there is a level of uh, commercial that uh, ha you have access to within the RPR, uh, you know, uh, services as well. My conversation today is going to be a little bit more focused on residential, but I will show you where the commercial information can be found. Um, I'm going to assume that the majority of us today are, you know, more focused on residential and those questions and how those work. But of course, we'll show you how to go ahead and, you know, essentially not only find commercial information, but of course, where the support tools are for those particular things as well. So I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and immediately share my screen here and to start 
just to make sure that you guys can see that this is going to be your login screen right here. And I wanted to start here first because what you need to make sure that you're doing as far as uh, getting access to this uh, to these tools is making sure that you're actually uh, submitting your uh, setting up your profile with your NRDS number. You'll need that so that way you can actually get access to this as a realtor before you start. So again, uh, just making sure that you have that information as well. Let's go ahead and log in here. So once you are, I'm gonna minimize some things here so I can see a little bit better. There we go. Uh, once you're actually in the, the website, you've signed in, this is gonna be your home screen. So essentially you're gonna have a few uh, search options here at the top. You have some shortcuts, which I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys in just a moment. And then of course you have a large map here of uh, information. Uh, I'll show you a few things as far as how to set that up, which is pretty neat. Scrolling down, any listings that you currently have will also be here on the left-hand side. So currently I have a couple of pending listings, uh, but uh, anything there will be uh, showing up as well. And then of course, any previous listings that you may have had as well. And I think it's over the last six months or so, those will be showing up there as well on the left-hand side. Uh, regarding anything as far as properties that are specific to you, you have a few tabs here with anything that you've saved within this RPR system, anything that you may have viewed recently, any reports, also, and we'll go over, like I said, again, the reports, uh, you know, pretty much in detail, any reports that you've run in the past, and I think it's last six months you'll have access to, you'll have access to that there, and then also any notes, uh, anything specifically for you that you want to go ahead and remember on specific property searches, whatever the case may be, you'll have access to that as well. Uh, any recent searches that you have also done as well uh, will show up here on the right hand side. So uh, anything that you may have searched for over the past six months will also share uh, show here on the right hand side. And I don't have any saved searches, but if you've saved any of those searches, they will also be quickly available on the right hand side here as well. Uh, lastly, uh, a couple of things I wanted to go ahead and make sure that you guys saw, because, again, we have an hour today, so I won't be able to go over everything in detail here, but I want to make sure that you guys understand and know where your support and where your help can be. Uh, you'll have the opportunity here to join discussions with the Facebook group, which I have that actually open, which I'll show you got in just a second. Uh, you also have a uh, toll-free telephone support. So you can go ahead and give RPR a call if you want any kind of support that requires a phone conversation. And there is a great library of on-demand training. I'm going to go ahead and show this for just a quick moment because the actual library is very, very much in detail. And I love taking a look at some of the former webinars and some of the tools that you have here. So I just clicked on the webinar, um, the library segment here. And as you can see, there's stacks of uh, trainings, webinars, white pages, uh, things of that nature that uh, may fill in the gaps here a little bit of, uh, you know, things I may not go over today, but you definitely have some opportunity here to not only learn more about the RPR tool, but there are some particular subjects here that I think are really neat as far as investment analysis, uh, prospecting, uh, farming tools, uh, you know, CMAs can guide you in a tight market, uh, brokers tools, neighborhood reports with eBooks, things of that nature. So again, uh, and also, if you forget or don't scroll all the way down to the screen right there in the bottom, your support uh, help will always be available with the help tab right here on the top right hand corner. So you can actually search for something specifically. Again, as you can see, you have the toll free number that you can call live chat, a training area, and then an email uh, directly to uh, support at the uh, RPR services team. Um, showing you guys really quick the Facebook uh, website, excuse me, for anybody that uses Facebook. Uh, I've been very much on, uh, you know, tracking their Facebook website lately because they've been doing a lot of webinars lately. And, you know, the webinars, you can go ahead and uh, claim your spot, add that to your calendar. But again, there's a lot of information here and a lot of tools here that can be very helpful as well. Just a couple of hours ago, they put out a couple of white pages about 50 ways RPR can be more efficient to you to help you be more productive and successful. So awesome, awesome information here that they're providing here as well. So again, just some more support tools. Wanted to make sure that you guys saw that before we dive into what we're going to go over today uh, from what you have access to here. All right. So again, once you're actually on the website, uh, you're going to see a few different things here as far as search tools. Obviously, you can do any kind of normal searches with criteria that you have as far as putting in an address, place, MLS IDs, APNs, things of that nature here in this search box. And of course, as I click, you can see a few of the different searches that I've done. Uh, anything that you've done in the mobile app as well will uh, kind of immediately transfer here to the website 
and vice versa. So I just wanted to throw that out there to you as well. Anything that you search on both will go ahead and be available for you uh, for quick reference. Uh, you can change your type statuses as far as what you're looking for here in this tab. So for example, by default for sale for lease is going to be by default your um, your uh, options here, but you also of course have access here to taking any active uh, under contract pending, closed, withdrawn here as well. Very similar to MLS searches, you have access to this as well within that tab. You can change your property type here as well. Obviously, with the normal single family, condos, mobile manufactured, multifamily, et cetera, here within the property type. And of course, you can get granular with the price. So, of course, you can talk about total pricing, price per square foot. Uh, if you are you know, doing anything with leases, you can go ahead and make sure that your prices are set up uh, manually here as well. Uh, there are more filters as well here, which I will click this. And this is when everything that we just took a look at with the type statuses, property types, of course, are here. But scrolling down, if you want to do anything as far as estimated values, you can go ahead and click those. If you're taking a look at things as far as, uh, you know, maybe investments or, you know, for any clients that are looking at this from, you know, value standpoint. Uh, of course, your normal search options here with sizes, is units, distressed properties, open houses, land lots, miscellaneous fields, so absentee owners owner occupied types, things of that nature. And of course you can do keyword searches as well. And on the bottom here, they have their most popular keyword searches based on what they have seen, you know, from anything from garages, basements, fireplaces, uh, waterfronts, garages, uh, golf courses, cul-de-sacs, things of that nature. Uh, so you can get very, very detailed here with the actual searches. Kind of scrolling down, and I'm going to go and show you guys the shortcuts in just a second. I think this is pretty neat, but you have a few different shortcuts here. And what these are before I go into it, the actual RPR website will go ahead and walk you through how to do these specific things as far as working on prospecting for clients, searching using the map, creating reports, et cetera. So I will make sure to go ahead and show you at least one or two of the shortcuts and how it kind of walks you through. Again, just another tool to guide you through this actual website if you're you know, doing this for the first time as far as a specific type of search or needing to create a CMA or anything of that nature. Uh, on the bottom here, again, has your map uh, search here, uh, your map information here, and again, kind of everything here that you have as far as your, your actual website. So I'm going to click off the more filters uh, thing here. So let's go ahead and show you guys the shortcut option here and how it kind of walks you through. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, the search using using a map shortcut. Once I click that, a box pops up and it says tour the RPR map. Ready to get started? Follow the on-screen instructions as we take you on a tour of the RPR map search. And then, of course, it says, OK, show me. Click by uh, Start by clicking Research, by clicking Map Search, enter an area such as a zip code, and click the icon button. And for the sake of it, I'm going to put 29229. Let's do that. Icon button. Now we will introduce you to a few helpful features on the map. So I'm not gonna go and continue to go ahead and go through this entirely, but as you can see with those shortcuts, it is walking you and guiding you through the tour of how to do this particular step as far as doing a as far as doing a map search. And as you can see, just with those few steps, it pulled up a bunch of different options here uh, that are available based on the criteria that is placed in there. Um, so again, the actual shortcuts option here is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and reset here so that way you guys can see it'll be the same thing as far as reports, which I'm going to show you guys how to actually go more granular in supports again, of course. But again, in case you forget this or you don't go through the help tab on the top or the bottom here, it will walk you through these particular, uh, you know, these particular options here on how to create reports, create CMAs, prospecting, things of that nature. So hopefully this is a little helpful as far as a quick uh, shortcut uh, cheat sheet to get you going on a couple of different things. But again, I wanted to make sure that you guys saw that. Um, kind of navigating back again. Let me make sure I click off of that. You do have a couple of different research options here as well for property searches. Again, map searches, neighborhood searches, school searches, and et cetera. So you'd have a different, uh, few different research options there that you can click on. When it comes to marketing, there are opportunities for you to do marketing as well. So prospecting for residential and, of course, commercial clients. It's clicking on the residential prospecting tab will, again, take you through a tour of the website, walking you how to get started with either prospecting for buyers or sellers. Just for the sake of it, I know everybody can appreciate the opportunity to create uh, you know, opportunities for sellers. 
It'll walk you through how to go ahead and start your prospecting opportunity for sellers. Again, just another tool in your toolbox. I know a lot of folks are using C, um, uh, CRMs, different options here as well, but RPR kind of has the great opportunity here for you to do that exact same thing, that same thing, excuse me, and walk you through the actual opportunity step-by-step step of how to do that. Um, you have a few different reports here as well. We're going to go over that in just a moment. But for you guys that are not familiar with the type of reports that you can actually do, um, there are a quite a few different reports that you have access to here within the uh, within the RPR uh, uh, website. Uh, for example, property reports, seller reports, property flyers, mini property reports, valuation workshop, workbooks, and et cetera. I will be showing you guys and telling you guys in just a moment what the differences are because there are different scenarios and different uses for each of these. And then of course, on the mobile website, I will make sure to show you guys how to run these reports as well. Um, again, there is a learning tab here that has some awesome opportunities for videos that you can take a look at very quickly from doing anything as far as communicating and shifting the market, uh, RPR's new property detail, other videos there as well that you have access to very quickly. So there are amazing learning tools that you have access to here as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show um, you guys something very important here. Actually, let me go to my tab here. One thing um, I want to make sure that you guys don't overlook as well, because when you run a report and you go ahead and you pro provide that opportunity for information to either your buyer, seller, investor, client, it will be set up in a certain way based on how your profile is set up. So I'm going to click on profile very quickly. And again, what you want to make sure is that before you start sending off reports, because there's going to be a... Um, there's going to be a cover letter. There's going to be other information regarding you that is on that report. You just want to make sure that information is um, is accurate and also uh, very nice and presentable. So make sure that, you know, when you go into your profile, that your wonderful uh, picture is set up there for you, uh, your company uh, approved logo or information approved from your company or firm is also on there as well. Make sure that your contact information and your title is actually there and set up correctly as well. And information uh, regarding your brokerage, the address, contact information with your telephone number, email address, and also your website. Um, also as well, um, if you are a member of multiple MLSs, I just want to bring this up as well because obviously RPR is a realtor resource and a few of us may have access to a few different um a few different MLS accesses and be a member of a few different uh, realtor boards uh, or realtor memberships within certain areas, uh, you have the, the opportunity to make sure that you are listing any MLS that is a realtor member uh, on this actual part of the tab as well. So for me, I'm also licensed in another state, so I have access to MLS data from that MLS in that different state. But within you know, South Carolina or anywhere, anywhere, anywhere else that you may be, you wanna make sure that that information is uploaded here in your profile. One, to make sure that you're pulling up uh, you know, accurate information for any clients that may need that information in those areas. But also two, if you need to just do any general searches in those areas, that will make sure that that information is very accurate and make sure that it's um, you know, as best as possible when you're relaying that information. All right, so let's get into some of the information that you guys were asking about regarding CMAs, reports, and things of that nature. And I have a couple of things here set up, but I want to go ahead and pull up a search here. Let's say you're doing a search and you have a client that is either a um, seller's client that wants some information about how the market is affecting their opportunity to think about selling, or you have a buyer and they're very specifically looking at a home and they want information about this particular home. And, you know, they want to, you know, they want to work with you on getting that information, uh, you know, to them to make a essentially a decision on something. So I have a home here that I have clicked up here. Um, let's click on this. So let's take a look at the full details of 305 Pinewood Cottage Lane in Blythewood. Wonderful home. So let's say you have the information pulled up on a specific home or a specific listing that you're wanting information on. This is what's going to pull up on your main page here. Um, it's quite a few different details here. So at first, you're going to have general property information. And that property information is, going to, of course, going to have information on the list price, beds, baths, square footage, and square footage based on the information that is inputted in the MLS. Of course, you have information on a street view. You have a satellite view as well. There's a 3D tour that will be available. We're not going to click on that. And of course, any kind of historical information as far as historical photos will be available as well. So a lot of information there to kind of get started here. 
Of course, you also have information here that you can provide and take a look at regarding market trends. So um, this will go ahead and show the market trends in that specific area as far as how things are working, as far as monthly inventory, list to sold price, median days, median sold price in the area, refound value. And we'll go ahead and talk about where refound value is right now. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and show that in just a second. Um, you can go ahead and essentially run a CMA which I'm going to go ahead and not go too much into detail on this because I want to go ahead and bring that up in the reports tab here. But there's some things that uh, you can go ahead and confirm and change and edit here when it comes to your CMA. So you have comparative analysis and the sales comparative analysis uh, option that you have here. And of course, you can do a few different things as far as confirming the home facts. If things are not correct, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this because I saw this and there were some discrepancies as I was taking a look at this and using this as a subject example. As you can see, public record data shows about a 10 square foot difference between what it has and what was listed in the actual MLS. So this is where you can get granular as far as making sure and confirming a few different things about the listing itself. And I bring that up because there was a question about that as far as just making sure and confirming things regarding bedrooms, bathrooms, square footages, and things of that nature. This is where you can go ahead and essentially find and confirm different things that is showing in the listing. And of course, showing on public record, even the heating is showing different, uh, you know, um, different uh, portions here as far as what the heating uh, options are here. So that's where you can go ahead and confirm and make sure that you're providing the information correctly to your client before you get to that point. Um, you can immediately create a seller's report there. I'll talk about what that is in just a moment. But again, if you are, you know, just running a quick report for somebody here on a seller's report, you can do that here as well. Uh, and as far as anything, as far as the resulting of uh, changing of the pricing here, you can do that as well here by editing information on the comp analysis. So clicking that, if you want a recommended price, and let's say we'll just do like 250, you can change that information here as well. All right, but let's go back to the actual property because I want to go ahead and kind of answer a few questions that came up about uh a few different things as far as the values and what information is provided here on the actual listing. So as you guys can see, there is a list price of 2999, essentially 300,000 for the particular home. And there is a RVM. So essentially what is an RVM? An RVM is an estimated value generated by automated valuation models that uses on market and off market MLS listing data, plus publicly recorded sold data to provide an estimated property value. Uh, RPR claims that the RVM that they provide is the most accurate estimated value. RVMs and AVMs are available for single family residences, condos, and smaller multifamily properties. RVMs and AVMs are updated twice a month. So again, uh, that is kind of your definition of what the RVM is. Uh, they are very, very confident in the information that's provided to them based on the data that's provided. Um, an RVM or AVM and the estimated range is based on the confidence score for the property's estimated value. Property with high confidence score will be show a narrow estimate range. Property with a low confidence score will show a wider estimate range. So kind of getting off here for a second, there is about, what is that, close to fifteen or maybe $20,000 difference as far as the range there. So they're meeting kind of right in the middle. Uh, so again, that is the RVM estimate range that they're using based on their tools, their data, their AI as well. And the RVM confidence score is showing here as a five star. So a RVM or AVM confidence score describes the expected accuracy of a property's RVM or AVM estimated value. Far star rating is the highest confidence rating and a zero is the lowest. So a confidence score is based on outcomes of multiple automated valuation models. High score indicates that the model yields similar estimated values for the property. Low score, of course, indicates that the models yield a wider range of estimated values for the property. So at this range, at the 20,000 or so, they're considering it's a pretty confident score as far as where they feel the value is. I would tend to agree with that, kind of knowing the area. Uh, so again, you know, this is kind of explaining what the RVM is. Um, and one thing that came up that um, as far as the question is concerned, as far as why RVMs in the areas of certain areas, especially here in the Midlands, show no RVM values. Um, as far as prominent areas, that could be why, because you may have less data to work with. And of course, what this system is doing is pulling what it can within reason and also within a you know a, a reasonable time frame based on the data that it has. So if it doesn't have an RVM, it'll show basically an AVM, which is adjusted value. Uh, and that's where you get that information. And that's why in certain areas, you're going to go ahead and see differences 
with the RVMs here. Um, you can click on uh, your information here. It'll bring a big map here as far as more detail, as far as the RVM is concerned, and any properties used to create this RVM. So kind of taking a look at it here, scrolling down, it'll show based on the data and AI that it pulled information on properties, either closed or off market, that recently closed and why it came in with that value. So as you can see here in the Blyfoot area, it pulled one particular closed property and quite a few off-market properties that we're showing here. And that is how it based the data. So uh, if you have your specific questions on that, if you have clients that are asking, you know, why things are priced the way they are or why the values are, you know, kind of the way they are here, this is a great tool that you can provide to them. And you can even print this information off, off to them to show them why in the general area, why pricing is the way it is very helpful to you, you know, as you kind of move forward in the process with them. Um, continue with to scroll and show you guys what is here on the property value side of things uh, or property information side of things, excuse me. Uh, there's going to be some information here regarding the list price again, of course, a CMA value, uh, refined value. If you're working with a seller, you can also go ahead and essentially create a net sheet here to go and show seller's proceeds, which I think is really neat as well. Um, the description based on the MLS, of course, will be here. Any information here as far as property facts uh, can go ahead and, you know, be confirmed here as well. Of course, if any changes that you want to make here uh, to create any kind of CMA, CMAs or reports. There are a few additional resources as well. Uh, there is a tool here called Valuate. So if you're working with anybody that is a investor, uh, this tool can be very helpful for you. It's essentially uh, kind of a evaluation model. Uh, that can provide information for somebody in, you know, in that vein, as far as investments are concerned. And it'll uh, give information about long-term holds. Uh, if there's multifamily information and in summaries, you can provide that information, flip analysis and land development analysis as well. I think this is a very neat tool as well, because when it comes to investments and things of that nature, these guys are looking for obviously very specific things as far as, uh, you know, long-term, you know, uh, results or immediate results as far as flips and things of that nature. This will take a lot of uh, that homework off of your plate uh, and help you out with that. So I wanted to point out the Valuate tool here as well. There's also a climate change risk rating tool here as well called Climate Check. It'll take you out of RPR, but essentially if you want to go ahead and kind of confirm things as far as the buying climate, if you know your buyers are having questions and things of that nature about it, you can go ahead and use that tool as well. The contact information for the actual listing agent will be here as well. So this is Jessica's information uh, for this particular listing. And of course, the firm's information as well. MLS ID and of course, the type of agreement here as well. Information about the HOA, of course, we want to confirm, but general information about the HOA based on the MLS will also be here as well. And of course, information about, you know, transaction brokers and lot boxes. Um, other features here will show up as far as your interior features, uh, information about any kind of public info exterior features, which you want to check here as well. You have your legal description here as well. So your TMS slash parcel number will be here as well. Confirming of the county, uh, anything as far as the uh, lot description will be here as well. And of course, you have uh, opportunity to check for your plat map here as well. Uh, information about schools, of course, will show up here as well. I have this lowered here because the owner facts is public information. But for the sake of this particular uh, recording, I'm not going to show that. But anything that is publicly available, about the owner and ownership will show here in the owner's facts tab. So if this was expanded, you would be able to see information if it's public and then somebody has not opted out. Of course, just like in the MLS about any information on the owner uh, and even maybe some financing information as well if there were conversations and confirmations needed on that. Of course, you have information about the location, uh, flood zone information in the subdivision and any information about the listing as well whether or not you know, it started a price, any specific price changes. I like this because it will show the difference in percentages in the price changes here. Um, so that is very, very helpful as far as understanding exactly how you know, things trend, not only with this specific property, but also how it compares maybe with the rest of the market and maybe similar properties in the area as well. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and point out the public record history as well. This will go ahead and show information again about ownership, again, maybe about financing and things as well. But again, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that tab closed for the sake of this recording. But for your FYI, you can find information about the public information records here within the tool in this particular tab. Sales and financing activity will show up here as well. And of course, any information about the, uh, you know, the, the past history of this property will show up here as well. Um, estimated value information is here. I think this is pretty neat because it'll show kind of a graph of the market. And as we saw, you know, especially over of the past few years, things have just been very, very interesting, including the uptick 
and pricing values. Uh, so for, for you and uh, for any information that would be helpful for you on that and your client, you can pull up a graph and show them that information as well. So again, that is information that's going to be available on the actual property itself. But let's go into the reports. I want to go ahead and show you guys exactly what the reports bring and the differences of the reports as you're essentially providing information to your client on these. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on create report here. And it is going to bring up a separate website or separate tab. Uh, so as we take a look at this, you can see that there are quite a few different reports that I scroll down that are available for you to uh, provide to your client. And I'm going to click on each one and uh, hopefully it gives you guys an idea of exactly what each one will provide separately and how situa situationally you would want to go ahead and provide this information to your client. So the first one being the property report, it's about a 28 page or 30 page report. And the property report is a comprehensive look at the individual property. It's going to have detailed information about the property and historical listing photos, local market statistics, any activity foreclosure activity and neighborhood demographics. So this is kind of your more general analysis of the property, uh, kind of a good property uh, report that you can provide either to a prop, uh, to a buyer or seller in general uh, for information uh, specific to it. There is, however, a very specific seller's report. And as you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, it is very comprehensive. It is also editable, but is a 81 page, um, approximately 81 page report if you do not make any changes. And what the seller's report is going to provide is a essentially a better report for listing opportunities and listing presentations. So it's going to review the subject property. It's going to show the condition of the local market for information that can be provided to your seller. It's going to provide comps analysis for side-by-side -side comparisons. And it's going to also recommend a pricing strategy and show the estimator, uh, estimated excuse me seller proceeds. An awesome report for anybody that is working with a seller and you want to provide information on strategy going forward or how you want to start with a particular property as far as pricing, as far as strategy for, you know, you know, any kind of needs to do any kind of updates, things of that nature in comparison to other properties. And of course, the proceeds conversation as well. And as you can kind of see, it's kind of trickling through and showing different pages here. Very comprehensive. I use this one quite a bit, if I can be very honest with you, uh, with my toolbox of different uh, resources that I have for sellers. I like to provide them a good amount of information so that way there's not a lot of uh, questioning things as far as, um, you know, facts and, you know, um, you know, kind of leaving any gaps or, you know, that kind of information there. You do have a property flyer, which is a one page property flyer. Great for marketing. Um, it's just a, basically a marketing uh, web uh, flyer that you can have printed off for a specific property there. Uh, you have a mini property um, report as well that is kind of a 12-page report and it's, you know, provide essential information about the home, uh, kind of what is shown on the summary tab of the first page. And it's going to provide information about the property estimated value, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, photos, things of that nature. This is a report that I use personally when, as an example, if I'm out and about with a client and let's say we are enjoying a Saturday, we're taking a look at a few homes. I think everybody has gone through this at least once as being an agent. Uh, mom or dad may be with a young couple and says, hey, well, there's a house around the corner. Uh, you know, I'm taking a look at them on realtor.com or zillow.com. Uh, do you have any information you can pull about it very quickly? I'm going ahead and plugging in something like that before we move forward into this mini property report because it provides, I think, a good summary for you know, a situation like that to make a decision if it makes sense to take a look at it and be considered. Um, and it's not you know overkill. About 10 pages that somebody can take a look at on their phone, very quick, easy PDF that can be emailed. I love the mini property report in those circumstances. Um, and again, something that can you know kind of answer quick questions on, on you know, a property in, in a scenario like that. And like I said, for me personally, that is one I use quite a bit. The valuation board book. So this one is a 74 page report and it summarizes basically anything from the sales compare, uh, comparison analysis uh, frame of mind. So it's gonna include details about the subject property, comps, any adjustments made in the workflow as well as an overview of the local housing market conditions. So this is great, you know, when you have a conversation, you're considering overall market conditions going forward and this particular property and how those compare. So again, very similar to a seller's report minus a few different things, but more thinking about going forward and kind of comparing it and considering the market conditions um, as you, you know, as you look at the specific property there. There is a specific market activity report. 
So this one, if you actually click on it, it's going to provide information specifically on market activity. And uh, it'll go ahead and show a summary of active, pending, sold, and expired in the area and the stress. You can edit this as well to show what's on the report. So some of those can be changed. Uh, and of course, recent pricing, pricing changes and upcoming open houses are also included if you decide to keep those in. And as you can see, it goes ahead and shows quite a bit of data uh, based on a kind of a map tool that you can provide to, you know, essentially a buyer or seller uh, considering the situation. Great report as well. I like these last two as well because these are neighborhood and school reports. This keeps us compliant with not having to go ahead and answer things from an opinion standpoint and just considering the black and white. So the neighborhood report is what it is. It's going to show economic housing and demographic and quality of life information about the area that you can provide that is safe to communicate to either your buyer or your seller. And of course, you have school reports as well. And as it you know, states, it provides us student information, testing outcomes, community uh, information about a public or private school. So again, those last three reports I love, I send those out quite frequently as well. It gets me out of the conversation about, hey, you know, is this neighborhood safe? What do you think about it? Hey, how are the schools, uh, you know, are the schools bad or the schools good? That information you can provide them in a simple report to answer those questions there for you. Um, kind of going ahead and showing you guys a little bit of information on the right hand side here as well. So why I was saying it's so important to make sure that your profile set up with your picture and your information there and your logo is because your cover page is going to reflect that information. So we want to provide a very you know professional looking report in any circumstance to your buyer or your seller or your client uh, so that information will reflect what is in your profile. So just make sure that is actually updated as well. And of course, you can change any elements of the cover page here on the actual uh, you know, report here as well. So anything that you want or do not want to include on the cover page can be edited here as well. Um, once you actually run a report, I'm going to run, let's just say I'm going to run the mini report just very quickly. I want to show you guys how it looks. I'm going to run this report. And it is going to go to a dash here in just a second. So you get a you get a box here. It says report generation, and it, you'll have a pop up when the message is uh, pop up message. Excuse me, when the report is ready. So essentially, uh, if you are sending this report as well to anybody externally, you can put in a name or an email address and change your you know your kind of your there, there goes the report showing up already generated. So you can guys can see how quickly it runs. Um, you can essentially go ahead. And you know, edit and personalize your report with some kind of greeting there as well. You can also go ahead and you know decide what kind of delivery method you want to provide to your client as well. So you know, if you're very comfortable with sending a PDF that may be uh, you know uh, generated here from the site onto your computer or to your email, you can do that, or you can email it directly to them, and then it will go ahead and send it directly to the email address that you put in. Uh, and of course, you can be CC'd on it as well. Uh, reports do expire after 30 days. Um, and of course, it does remind you to not send any unsolicited email messages via RPR. So just be careful as far as how you use this from a marketing standpoint. This should be more uh, information driven based on reporting and providing insight to a client specifically here. Of course, your information with your profile is going to be here as well. Just make sure that is uh, up to date. So let's click in this report. And it should pull up here. It'll pop up in another website here. So kind of give you an idea of the mini report. Uh, like I said, the one I kind of commonly use for buyers in those scenarios, it'll show your mini report here in a PDF form that can be shared. So again, your information is showing up here. It'll show your map view with your list price, information on any kind of comp analysis, estimated current values will reflect. Again, it's going to be based on the summary page that is showing up on that, on that uh, report. So if there's anything that needs to be changed, for example, if you're doing comps, and your comp analysis is reflecting something different, make sure that is edited uh, before you send this out because this big, bold, blue number here is going to reflect that. Uh, of course, information on uh, anything as far as the, uh, the RVM is going to show up here as well. Um, let's keep scrolling. Just show anything as far as uh, information on the uh, report itself as far as the home facts, what is showing as far as any discrepancies you know, uh, between public information and listing information. It'll show also as well any kind of refinements that you are recommending or anything that you show here that needs to be edited. That'll show here as well, of course. And it'll show some extended home facts here as well. You know, Obviously, interior information, exterior information, anything as far as location, zoning, the HOA, 
And of course, it has information here on the livability. So it has a 49 score. And of course, that's going to be based on a variety of different things as far as transportation, walkability, uh, health, opportunity, engagement, things of that nature. Um, you know, so it, it's basically providing an AI recommendation on, you know, livability here. Um, property photos are going to go ahead and show here as well on the actual listing, reflecting from the listing. Beautiful home, by the way. Really, really nice. Property history, of course, as far as anything with median estimated home values, uh, any information that shows, you know, versus with this property versus zip code versus Richland County in general. And of course, you know, comparing it to South Carolina, that may be pretty helpful as well. This shows any information about, uh, you know, sales history of the home, assessed values, anything with the legal description there as well. Um, and of course, any information here as far as comps, things of that nature that you want to go ahead and show here. So again, without kind of overkilling the information on this uh, on this property report, you're seeing how this can be helpful. Again, anything can be edited. I want to go ahead and show you guys this. Again, anything that I do not want to go ahead and show as far as homeowner facts, extended livability facts, things of that nature, that can be taken off. So this is a very, very, uh, you know, much... Um, you know, uh, kind of a report that can be, you know, uh, sent and used as your own way, just with the information necessary. But like I said, the mini property report kind of provides just engagement for information that can be provided to the seller or buyer, just to kind of provide some basic info. So again, something that I use quite a bit, uh, you know, to uh, go ahead and answer a few simple questions here. Uh, but again, any of these reports will go ahead and provide that insight uh, based on the type of report that you are running. So hopefully that answers things as far as how that works there. I'm going to go ahead and run one more thing here. Let's go back to here. And I want to see about the CMA here. So again, promising you guys, like I said, um, and again, talking about you know tools, they have a webinar coming up about spot on pricing. On April the 18th, you can go ahead and res uh, RSVP for that. I think I will definitely be on that. But again, when it comes to the CMA report specifically, this is where you can go ahead and engage and make sure that you're providing CMA information specifically about that type of uh, that type of conversation. So again, running again the information uh, about the CMA where you can do adjustments as far as comps. Again, it has two subject properties here. I do believe you can add more. Um, don't see where you can add more here, but it's going to go ahead and provide a couple of subject properties here uh, based on information on the comps there. You can go ahead and update the evaluation. Any updates that you have will reflect here. And then, of course, you can go ahead and create a seller's report. So I'm going to create that. Let's go ahead and create that report. I'm not going to go ahead and show you guys everything on there. But again, that is where you would go ahead and essentially create the CMA via the seller's report tab here. And again, if there's anything that you need to edit and change and things of that nature, as I explained, it is a very large and detailed report. You can go ahead and change anything necessary here, including deleting mortgage records, things of that nature, anything that you feel is necessary for this report for that particular conversation on the CMA. It'll pull up in just a moment here as well, but um, it is a very large report. And again, something that can, you know, go ahead and essentially be a very quick, uh, you know, opportunity to provide a CMA there. Um, one thing I'll say about this when it comes to this particular CMA versus any other tools I use, including our local MLS uh, access here that we have. Uh, there's a couple of other, you know, opportunities for run CMAs as well regarding the, uh, the CRMs that you're using. And of course, you know, anything as far as any other apps that have a partnership with us uh, here, you know, within the CCRA, I do find me personally that the information that is provided with this particular CMA because of that RVM to be very, very close. So when I am doing something as far as a more detailed conversation with somebody, I am actually running it through this particular, uh, you know, uh, resource here through RPR. Um, of course, you know, we're going to engage in conversation and kind of provide, you know, a lot of insight, uh, you know, as far as um, as far as the market, as far as anything, anything specific, uh, you know, as far as the, the the market and the detail and the neighborhoods and things. But when it comes to a conversation starter, I find the CMA here to be a very, very good tool. 
So again, me personally, this is where I start. And if I need to go ahead and kind of tweak and confirm a few different things with some of our other resources I do, but this is where I usually run to for more than half of my CMA opportunities I'm running for my clients. Uh, and as you guys can see, it's a very, very easy, simple opportunity to run with tweaks and of course, editable uh, based on your needs here. So in general, like I said, again, this is gonna be kind of your walkthrough on the website itself. I'm gonna go ahead and switch now let me show you guys the mobile website so that way we can have enough time for Q&A. Let's see here. Do, do, do. All right, so I want to make sure that you guys can see. All right, and there we go. And can you guys see? the um uh, the the uh, the mobile site i'm not able to see it on my end no Kenny, we, can't, we we still see your main um rpr screen you might want to stop your share and then just go to your phone yep let me try that there we go perfect all right good deal awesome all right so um as i said again you know me personally i am definitely a mobile uh, kind of agent out and about, uh, you know, usually uh, depending more on my cell phone and iPad and things like that, uh, you know, to run the business outside, everything as far as my computer uh, stays normally inside the office or in the house. So this is going to be your mobile website. Again, just making sure that you have access to logging in already set up. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. Once you are actually on the mobile website, it kind of uses geographic location to determine information immediately on the website. Uh, so it's gonna use your GPS and location to kind of pull basic information first here. So it's pulling information uh, based on where I am right now. So I'm in my home office right now. So it's gonna go ahead and show on this tab here, just the basics as far as homes in a general area of, a, of about a mile or so that's available for sale, anything recently closed, anything that would be considered a distressed home as well. So once I scroll to the right, it just shows some good information here about the Blythefoot neighborhood that I'm in, as far as the median estimated value, list price, changes in the pricing and things of that nature as well. So pretty neat. Um, this is gonna be good if you're in a situation, right? Like I said, and you're, you're mobile and you pull this app up and somebody is just kind of questioning how they should go ahead and approach, you know, maybe even a purchase of a home. This pulls up very quick information to kind of start and engage in that conversation before you even go and pull up information specifically on the property. So I do use this a lot to kind of give folks an idea, hey, right now, Let's say Friesgate and Irma, uh, I've been to a lot recently. I'll go ahead and say, hey, right now, this is kind of how the homes have been looking lately in the neighborhood as far as what's been selling, what's been the median price, um, you know, kind of how things are looking with the market, you know, have they been trending down a little bit uh, with the sales or has it uptick, you know, is the percentages up, uh, you know, with the changes a little bit, is it a popular place to, you know, look to buy right now? The information is kind of quickly here on this site. And of course, here you can continue to scroll and you can do some searches here as well. Couple of things I'm going to show you guys very quickly, and uh, I think we'll be, you know, able to show it in about four to five minutes. Making sure that on the settings tab here, all of your information with your profile, of course, and everything is set up. It's going to reflect what you have placed into the website. So you just want to make sure that that's actually set up there as well. Any kind of user settings. So again, uh, you can have, you know, a default on user settings here within a half a mile. You can actually change this. So that's the default right now. Uh, and anything as far as 30 days or 90 days on information regarding residential closings, new listings, commercial, things of that nature. Uh, you can also make sure that your MLS access, again, is set up here correctly as well. One thing too, if you have multiple MLSs that you have access to, make sure that the one that you want listed on your reports as far as a logo is selected here correctly. Uh, I learned that the hard way one time. So if you have any kind of uh, MLS access is outside of your locally or out of state, make sure that you're actually clicking on the proper source for information in the logo. Um, you have a couple of different options here as well. We can email RPR directly from the app. You can give them a shout and you can uh, get access to the Facebook website directly here as well. And of course, you can add RPR to your contacts if necessary. All right. So I want to go ahead and show you guys a couple of things here. Again, I'd already showed you guys the searches. I'm going to click on the little GPS arrow here. And it'll show where I am and it'll show anything as far as information based on my settings. Like I said, I have half a mile, which is a default, and it, it'll show anything available here as far as distressed properties and also, of course, information on the listings itself. So that 300K was the actual property that we just saw. So once I clicked on that, 
you're taking a look here and you're taking a look at the same property just in a mobile view. So I'm going to click on it. It has is basic information on the price, bedrooms and bathrooms and square footage. Now that I've clicked on it, you have a different mobile view versus what you have here on the website, uh, but it is the same information, essentially exactly the same information. So um, all of your pictures are available here as well. Like I said, beautiful property. But again, it's going to show and reflect the same information from the MLS and also from the website here. And if I continue to scroll, the same information will be available here that was reflected on the site. A um, couple of different options here, though, however, you can see where you can call, uh, in this case, Jessica directly, either via the call by agent button or the call agent button on the bottom. Any notes that you may want to take about this property for future reference, you can place it here as well. But also those reports that I ran, if you remember, I said the reports that I ran on these properties will be reflected here and available on my mobile app. So this is how those reports look as far as availability here on the mobile app. So you have a few different options here where you can view it or you can share or you can delete those. If I view, let's pull up this seller's report just so you guys can kind of see. It's going to pull up the website. It's going to pull up the PDF on the website here. And again, wonderful opportunity here for you to be able to go ahead and essentially share this information directly to your client. And you have your share button, of course, that's right there. Um, and you can go ahead and share the report directly to them via the share button here. So you can go ahead and essentially, you know, do a text message where you can send us the PDF, things of that nature, which I've done before in the past. Again, the mini property report, as long as it's edited to make sure that there's no information that doesn't need to be shared or information that you want to make sure is shared, very quick and easy way to do that from the mobile website. So again, this is actually what I use on a regular basis here. Um, and if you want to do a share directly here before sharing any reports online, make sure that you're compliant with any kind of laws. Same information pulls up right there, right? So you can share this directly from your website. Um, nice, easy way to go ahead and get that information going. But again, if I continue to scroll down on this particular property, the same information, but just in mobile form, will be uh, able to be viewed and, of course, shared as well and also relate to your client. If I am doing any kind of searches and I don't like the circle view here, I can also change that to the list view. So the list view will show it in a more traditional form, of course, with this particular uh, subject property that we're looking at. And then also the acreage of land that is showing around the corner there. And I believe that was showing up as the distressed uh, property uh, on the summary page. So again, you have uh, you know different way to take a look at the available properties within your search criteria. But if I'm going ahead and changing some things here, let me sort this out here. Do do do. And removing the boundary. If I want to change the distance, draw the pin to move it. Select the distance. Click apply. If I want to do that, I can go ahead and change that there. Right now, I have a one mile radius here. But again, as you can see in the bottom of the uh, of the map there, you can see where it says select distance. If I need more data, let's say five miles, and I'm going to apply that. As you can see, it pulls up a lot more information uh, there on the actual site. Um, very similar actions can be done on the uh, website. I meant to go ahead and show that to you guys, but it's the same. It's the same process essentially, where you go through map actions and you can go ahead and change the distances. Uh, you have different options there as well regarding traffic, parcels, schools, properties, and legends. One thing I do want to show you guys, I use this a lot on the actual website, is the draw option. So if I go ahead, let me do that better. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom out here. And let's say I want to focus on downtown Columbia. And if I do a, let's redo that, draw. Let's say I want to just, it's not really downtown, but you guys get the drift there. You can also do a draw there as well. So uh, just like with a few different options and resources that you guys may already have with that same, that same kind of tool, very similar here. Criteria is going to be based on anything yet that you have set up. So if you don't have any kind of criteria set as far as the maximum values of the homes or minimum values of the homes, it's going to pull anything up from, you know, zero to, you know, infinity. And as you can see, there's a $2.38 million listing there. But again, a very neat way for you to go ahead and essentially, you know, have kind of a quick resource for your client. Again, if I'm in the Lexington area and I'm showing homes to a client and I just want to focus on that. It'll pull up all the information there. So that way I'm providing information to them and we can have a conversation about maybe including or excluding any kind of homes within a, within a particular search, right? Um, 
So again, that is going to be your mobile website, kind of how that operates. Let me show you guys a couple of things here. Your reports, again, are available here. You can also run reports based on uh, your criteria that you're inputting here. So the same property reports, sellers, mini reports, things of that nature are available to be ran through here as well. Any recent homes that you took a look at will show up here. So anything that I particularly looked at, including my listing, will show up here on the website, uh, on, excuse me, on the mobile app for quick reference. And anything that you save will show up in the bottom right-hand corner. You can click that very quickly. I go back to home. It'll go ahead and take, play, place me back, excuse me, uh, on the home website. And again, based on a criteria that I have at the 0.5 miles, we'll pull up the quick summary there. Um, guys, that is essentially, you know, it was kind of a, you know, kind of a quick, quick overlay of everything. I know we got about five minutes maybe for Q&A, but that is essentially the gamut of the overall view of RPR um, you know, from the website standpoint and also the mobile website. Um, Desiree, if we have any questions um, that I did not answer, I would love to be able to answer any questions for anybody at this moment. I think all of the questions that came through Q&A were answered, but before we sign off, if you just quickly log back into your desktop and show everybody where the help button and the support and the on-demand uh, um, education and training are, so whenever uh, they have an opportunity, they can go and kind of refresh themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, showing you guys, I'm going to go home where your resources are, because you have quite a few, again, different areas where you can get back and get to any kind of learning options here. So you can go ahead and learn about a specific page and it'll go ahead and have videos for you immediately there that you can watch. You also have a few different webinar options that you can take a look at there. Um, I just noticed this, this is kind of neat. I'm gonna be looking at this myself. Uh, Canva temp uh, templates for market updates is an option here. So I'm gonna be looking at that one myself. I just noticed that, but this is where you have a few different options and tools um, that are immediately available to you through the Learn tab. If I click on help, of course, you have a few different options here regarding your toll-free number that you can call. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week for support, live member chat support, the training area, which I'm going to click on in just a moment. And then, of course, the actual website, uh, excuse me, the email address. Um, I would go ahead and if I was you guys, I'd make sure to save that email address at the very least and the telephone number. Um, I will say this on behalf of all brokers in charge. <laughs> You know, uh, sometimes we do get questions about things with RPR and some of the technical stuff. And uh, in most cases, I know uh, some of our fellow uh, other brokers and charters and owners, we reflect back to the source of getting, you know, uh, support from the actual source itself, which in this case would be the telephone number and, of course, the email address. But for your own learning and your own benefit, again, the learning center, which I just clicked on the training center tab there, brings all of these valuable resources that you can go ahead and go back to and look at it any time. They do record and they keep all of their webinars recorded. Um, but again, if you need to get granular and take a look at anything as far as eBooks, any printable material, anything that is more specific to commercial, for example, market trends, the mobile app, all of this information is here. Um, and even if you just have, you know, kind of an idea of saying, hey, you know what? I only got about 10 minutes to take a look at something very quickly. I'll click on this and it'll go ahead and bring up Quick 10 minute, uh, you know, refresher, refreshers, uh, in this case for brokers, owners and managers, but you can get granular as far as any kind of training that you need there. Quick links here, let me go and scroll down. You have your articles here that you can go ahead and reference here as well. Great uh, pieces of information there. And as you can see, there's information about multifamily, data driven real estate sales funnels, um, 50 ways uh, our realtors are using RPR in their real estate business. And as you guys saw on the, on the Facebook site, that was something that was available as well. And I'll show you the Facebook site one more time. I'll continue to scroll down. The knowledge base, which you can go ahead and click on here as well, where you can get granular, type in any keywords, but you can also go ahead and take a look at very specific help topics regarding the home, uh, about RPR, property information, anything that may have been you know, a little bit more uh, detail that you want to take a look at as far as reports, you can take a look at here as well. And as I continue to scroll, so many different things here, popular articles that they bookmark are here as well, recent articles uh, that are very specific about RPR in general, you can take a look at here as well. The Resource Center, I think we just took a look at, no, the Resource Center here as well. Um, basically a library of videos that you have access to. I, I will point out here too as well, they do have a, a, a YouTube uh, channel as well. 
which is where they do stored in videos, but they're embedding them here on the site. So you can also go to Realtor Property Resource on YouTube, and you can go ahead and take a look at anything that they have saved on there. But um, so many different videos here as well that you can go ahead and take a look at. WordPress calendar plugins, webinar widgets, so many different tools that, that are at your disposal. Lastly, I will go back, and I think this is the, let's go here. I have to move something around my screen. Here we go. And just one more time, for anybody that is a uh, Facebook user or has a Facebook page, uh, Realtors Property Resource does have a Facebook page as well. Um, and again, all of the information here that reflects on the Learning Center or the Knowledge Base usually reflects here on the website, um, excuse me, on the Facebook page, but you can always go back here and take a look at anything there. Like I said, again, they have a, web, they have a webinar that is actually coming up um, on uh, actually today at two o'clock, Research Properties, Neighborhoods, and more. Um, so again, and they will be recording. I saw somebody put something will be recorded. So they do record their webinars as well. But again, their Facebook page, another great resource to have access to their tools and their and, and their uh, videos and things of that nature. They also embed their videos there as well here for resources. So again, another way and another area where you can find all their videos here. I would encourage you guys when you have time at night and you're just taking a look at, you know, um, you know, just wanting to go ahead and kind of get yourself a little bit more acclimated or just learn something different instead of watching, you know, the normal news or the, uh, the Netflixes and things of that nature. I try my best uh, to go ahead and get into these types of things with their videos and their webinars and catch up and kind of increase my knowledge base a little bit about this particular product uh, as well. So that is what I try to do here. But again, the Facebook page is a great resource along with their, with their knowledge base and also their resource center. Any other questions? Thank you so much, Kenny. You did a fantastic job. I think we managed to get all of the questions answered. And for those of you who haven't been able to type fast enough, we did want to let you know that this is recorded. Uh, you'll be able to watch the recording in a couple of days when it posts to the CCRA YouTube page. Only those who you who attended live will be eligible for the thousand points because I saw that question come through a couple of times through CCRA. Um, but we did want you to be able to have an opportunity to get an overview if you weren't familiar with the program and get a refresher if you haven't used it in a while. And we just appreciate all of you who attended. So thank you so much. And we'll see you guys in a couple of months when we do our next Lunch and Learn. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you, guys.